Hello everybody, my name is Michael, and in today's video what we're going to be doing is this right here. So if that looks interesting to you guys, please carry on and watch the video. And also just one more thing, if you enjoy what I do here, please don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. It really helps me out and it lets me know you guys enjoy these videos. So with all that out of the way guys, let's get into that video. Okay, so starting off with our Minotaur here, as you can see I've given him a Zenithal Prime and that's of course starting with black and then coming over top with a spray of white, catching all those highlighted areas and then we can still see those shadows of the black underneath. And what I'm going to be doing is starting off with Burnt Flesh, because what I'm trying to go for here is I'm going to give him a nice dark skin tone, uh, something sort of uh, brownie reddish, I want to give something a little bit different uh, to what I usually do with skin tones. And I think starting off with Burnt Flesh is going to be a good base for this and it's going to be really good for doing areas like the shadows of the muscles and that as we highlight it up in progressive steps. So just a matter of coming in and painting up the, all the areas where we can see the skin on our Minotaur. Okay, so now we have our base toned down of our Burnt Flesh. What we're going to do now is add just a little bit of reddish flesh in there. Sort of a 50-50 mix. So we've got a mixture between our Burnt Flesh and reddish flesh. And like I said, I'm going for a reddish skin tone. So that's what we're going to be great for this first layering step and as you can see I'm going around and picking out the highest points of our model here and since this model is so well uh, sculpted you can actually see the, the muscle definition pretty easily as you can see here I'm picking out abs and stuff like that so quite easy to pick out those definitions but if you can't pick out definitions like that on the model what you want to be doing is aiming for uh, the higher points the areas that look like they would sort of naturally hit the sun that's where we want to be really getting in this uh, reddish flesh color. Then once we have that complete, what we're going to do now is just be using reddish flesh by itself. And this of course is for our highest points of the highlight, so I'm using a uh, finer motion here and just using even smaller areas of where we're placing our high, uh, highlights. So we've got that bigger sort of popping out color with our reddish flesh. So it's in incremental steps, you know, obviously, so we can get the most effect out of the volumes on the model. So just a matter of going around and picking up those smaller areas, just going around and slowly making it look that you can see each layer underneath so you get maximum effect out of this technique. Okay, now that we have that layer of highlighting done, what we're going to be doing now is coming in with charred brown. I'm going to be using this for our base tone of our fur area. So we can see those nice furry patches on our minotaur here so that's what we've got on the back of the uh, head neck area we've got some of course on the legs with the hooves and there's also a couple of tufts on the arm as well so making sure we give these a good overall coat of a nice deep dark uh, charred brown here and as you can see i'm painting off camera again like i usually am because i'm focusing on it so sorry about that guys but it's just a matter of coming in and picking out those areas and then once we have that complete, what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be doing a wash and I'm going to be using Brycklin Flesh Shade for this. And this is going to be going over our flesh areas of our miniature. So giving it a good overall wash here and really making sure that we give it a good uh, coverage of the whole thing. So the reason why I left it to last here after the uh, layering is because I wanted to try and give the effect of the layering uh, with the wash uh, smoothing out those layered increments uh, when you place a wash over top of the layered areas it subtly smooths them out and gives a nice easier transition with a little less effort sometimes it can uh, it can muddy it up too much but if you do it with uh, the right steps and the layering it can really blend it out and look really nice and you can very rarely uh, see the transition between the colors that we've applied in our layering steps Then once we have our wash dry, what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be coming in with some leather brown, which is a lighter brown, and I'm going to be dry brushing it onto all of our fur areas. Now, as we're doing this, you want to be careful uh, where you're dry brushing because you don't want to accidentally get it over our skin area since we have that complete now. So just being aware, switch to a smaller brush if you need to. As you can see here, I'm using a very small fine tip uh, makeup brush, and that's what I'm using for the dry brush area so I don't get as much. Uh, on or I risk, uh, give a lot less risk to getting it on our skin area. It's just a matter of practicing your brush control here. And of course, we want to be hitting all the raised areas. So using a nice light touch to do that. 
So then once we have that dry brushing step done, what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be using khaki with leather brown mixed in, and I'm going to be using this for the highest highlights. And as you can see, I've got more of a, a layer brush here, and what I've done is I've wiped it off just like a dry brush, and I'm more going around it like an uh, over brush, so it's got a little bit more paint in it than a dry brush, and I'm just going around and hitting some of those areas very gently with the brush to get those highlighting points and really getting those raised areas, just to add in a little bit more of a highlighted effect and giving that uh, nice difference in colour there. Then once we have that fur area complete, what I'm going to be doing now is coming in with our uh, green colour here, I'm using Rift Green here, uh, this is a Scale 75 paint, I haven't used Scale 75 paint before, I just recently brought some so that I'll give it a try out here, but this is for our loincloth area, anywhere where we've got cloth, now this is totally up to you what colour you want to do here. Uh, you can make it red, blue, what, whatever you're after here. I'm just going with uh, green here. I thought I'd try out a new paint that I had, so why not? And of course, it's just a matter of going in and picking out the areas where you can see that cloth. Now that we have that cloth picked out, what I'm going to be doing is coming in with some hemp rope here. And what I'm going to be doing with this is I'm going to be using this for the belt around his waist that's holding up his uh, loincloth and that. Now, totally up to you what color you want to do here. You may want to do this sort of... Uh, a generic brown but I wanted to add a little bit more color into the piece and hip rope is sort of a yellowish green color I thought that would uh, give a little bit more color to the piece so it's totally up to you what color you want to do here but I thought the brown would get a little bit lost in his uh, skin tone since his skin tone is a lot darker and we already have our fur brown there so trying to limit a few of those colors down and add in just that little pop of color as you're looking over the model. Then once we have that complete, what we're going to be doing now is another wash, and I'm going to be using this for all the areas we've just painted up, so that also includes the fur of our Minotaur here. So giving it a nice brown wash, I'm using Agrax Earthshade, but any brown wash is going to be great here. And of course, you want to make sure that you're avoiding it pooling in any of the recesses or watching it as it dries, especially if you're playing, uh, lying it on thick, is we don't want it to run onto any of our areas we painted up with our skin. So just being careful and wick up any of our excess as it's drying if you need to, and just being careful about that as you're going around the model. Then once we have that complete, what I'm going to be doing now is coming in with some khaki. And what I'm going to be doing with this is I'm going to be using it to paint up the skulls. It's a little hard to see here on camera, especially when I'm barely focusing and getting it in frame. Is the Minotaur has some skulls on him. He's got them dangling on the side of his hip. And he also has one uh, in front of his loincloth area. So just picking those out with khaki, which is going to be a nice deep bone colour. Then with that complete, what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some deck tan, and this is going to be for all the wraps around here. So he has two areas where he's got the wraps, and that is for around his uh, axe he has in his hand, and also just around his arm here. But the other arm, it's actually wrapped in chains, maybe a little bit hard to see on camera, uh, but this arm here has some wrappings in there, so just coming in with the deck tan for that. Then once we have that complete, what we're going to be doing now is coming in with another wash, and this time it's going to be a sepia wash. So I'm using Sarah from Sepia, but any uh, sepia wash is going to do, and that's, of course we want to be placing over our bone areas and our wraps, and that's going to really make the wraps look uh, dirty and used, since he's a minotaur and he's just found whatever he can to wrap up his weapons. But also for the uh, skulls as well, it's going to really uh, liven them up and make it a little bit more like a... Uh, a uh, nice old nasty looking skull so that's why we're going with those washes then once we have that complete what I'm going to be doing is coming back in with leather brown now and I'm going to be using this for the horns I'm going to try to give a darker sort of uh, horn uh, pattern on our minotaur here now you could totally do the step when we're doing our uh, leather brown step before I didn't really think about what style of horns I wanted until just now so that's why I didn't place it on before sort of I was painting as I go and I thought hey let's go with a darker color on the horns than uh, sort of a bonus color like I usually do then once I've done that I'm going to come in now with a, a different brown so a darker brown here and I'm using Gobi brown for this which is another scale 75 paint like I said I got a few so I want to give them a try and what I'm doing here is I'm going from the very tips of the um, horns and I'm just coming down and sort of like um, really fast sort of stripes down there trying to give a little end effect of texture to the 
uh, horned area and try and make it look it's probably a little bit hard to see on camera especially since I'm not focusing correctly so it's looking a little bit uh, blurry but I'm just going down the horns to an area where I feel right and just going in and just carefully striping them in. and now you can see a little bit clearer what I was meaning when you can uh, see the darkened tips and now I'm coming in with deck tan once again and this time I'm going to be using it at the base of the horns so what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to go from a uh, very light where the horn is in his head and out towards a dark tip and you can see here I'm just going along carefully striking my brush along giving it uh, quick uh, flicks to try and add in some uh, texture it's, it's really hard to describe but I'm trying to make it look as much like a horn as I can and I'm trying to make it go from light all the way up to a very dark tip of the horn so just a matter of going around and uh, just using quick motions I'm trying to end up with like a little spiky streak at the end try to make it look like it's naturally uh, going into the next color then once we have that complete what we're going to be doing now is painting up some of the metallics and I'm going to be using gunmetal for this now I'm not going to be painting up all the metallics on our miniature but I'm going to be aiming for the axe head and any of the chains that are on the miniature as well as uh, there's a couple of areas uh, where he's also wearing uh, jewelry so i'm going to pick out just a couple of them but not all of them because i want to come in with uh, gold in another step and paint up some of those areas gold took us in different areas of metallics because i want to make it look like he's collected jewelry while traveling through his maze so now I'm coming in with that gold and I'm going to be using greedy gold for this and as you can see I picked out all the areas I want to be uh, metal and silver with our metal color of course and now I'm coming in with gold and picking out some of these areas so here's a nice little like uh, I, th I believe it's like a cowbell it's a little bit hard to see uh, on camera here but I'm pretty sure it was was an actual cowbell that sort of dangling around by his loincloth I thought that was quite funny and I'm just picking out some of these ornaments on our weapons and over him uh, where he's got these nice sort of areas of pride where he's collected uh, things through his uh, maze is what I'm trying to go for here so I wanted to give it something a little bit flashier so that's why I'm going with the gold here but you could totally do it in the gun metal if you wanted to then once we have that complete what we're going to be doing is using a wash here and this is a black wash and I'm using dark tone for this we could totally use known oil or anything like that and what I'm going to be doing of course is giving it a wash over all our metallic areas so everywhere we've just painted up in our metallics so giving them a good overall coat of uh, wash here also one little thing too is he has a cleaver on his side here I don't know if I mentioned that too but it's on the sculpt here so if you're painting up this miniature be aware that there is a nice cleaver there on there so it's just a matter of coming in and picking out all these areas with a nice coat of wash and being careful as it's drying as well then once we have that wash completely dry what I'm going to do now is coming in with some shining silver and this is of course a nice bright metallic and we're going to be using this for our highlights on our metallic areas especially our silver areas so that's what like the axe we've got here so it's just a matter of coming out picking those areas where we want to naturally have it uh, in our shining light where the sun would be glinting off it so picking out the edges and stuff like that is what we really be wanting to be going after so and it's also too with uh, like the chains on his uh, arm here I'm just going around and picking out all the highest points there to really give it some definition especially when you're looking at it from a distance and we've got those washes applied you're going to be able to see the difference on the table then with that complete what I'm going to be doing is coming in with some efficient red and with this color I'm going to be using it to pick out the little gemstones that are on uh, some of the metallic areas are mainly the areas I've painted in gold these nice little bits of ornamentation yeah, there's uh, little spheres on there and I wanted to add in another color to the miniature give it a little bit of pop so I'm using a red here to make them like their nice shiny red ruby so totally up to you if you want to put a different color here or you just want to leave the metallic but I thought adding in that little bit of color just give it another little thing to look at on the piece and then with that we have completed painting up our minotaur so let's go on to those glamour shots and see how it came out in the end and with all that complete we have finally finished painting up our minotaur from our reaper bones miniature line so i hope this video has been helpful for you guys whether you want to follow along with what i did here or you just want to use the video some inspiration and in painting up your own miniatures but with all that said guys i'd like to thank you all for watching and i can't wait to see you all in the next video